Now then guys, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're all doing well. Um, this morning's a bit of a hectic day. I've had a few jobs dropped on me. Uh, I'm on my way to a site now where I went, it was a while ago actually, and there's a leak on the heating system. It's all under floor heating. It's in like a commercial property. So I've had um, leak detection out who just specialise in finding it and they really struggle to find it as well. So I've got all their survey. I'm just looking at it now and they've put one area of concern. I'll spin the camera around. So this is, this is what they've said. This is the area of concern that we're looking at. It's in the kitchen. They've done a full thermal uh, survey and moisture mapping of the whole building. There's uh, bits and bobs. But yeah, this is what they said. It's quite a detailed report. So what I'm gonna do is go and chop the floor up here because I can only go on the information that I've got and see if we can find it. Obviously they've marked this as an area of concern. So somewhere under this fire extinguisher you'll learn to permit to shop. The reason we're doing it today is because we're doing the bathrooms up in this building as well and the floor layer is there on site. So we, obviously we need to make good the flooring on the same day. Um, obviously we can't leave a hole in the floor. So I've got that to do. This job will either go really well or really badly. You just don't know. If the leak is there, it won't be too bad. Uh, I might struggle for a few bits to fix it because, as I say, I didn't really know I was doing it today. But I've got some bits in the van. We'll we'll figure it out. We'll we'll sort it. I've also just been a move to gas pipe, which I might include in this video as well. And there's a few other bits and bobs. So yeah, it's a busy, busy day today. Depending on how this leak goes, because you just you just don't know. If it's not there, I don't know what I'm going to do because I did have a quick look with my thermal camera. I was hoping they were going to gas it, but apparently they can't gas this one because they can't nail in the water out of the pipes or something. So yeah, we can only do our best. So we'll go and have a look at this. It is dropping now. Uh, it was dropping about once every week. It's dropping about once every three days now. So the leak has got a lot worse. So I'm heading out there now. We'll get the floor up. We'll have a look and then we'll just work it out basically. So yeah, um, we'll crack straight on. The floor is really wet there. So I'll cut this up and have a look. That floor has been repaired before there, look. So that's absolutely soaking. We'll see if we can get that piece all up. It's clearly had a join in it. That chipboard's going to be ruined, isn't it? Is that a, is that a thing? It? We'll break that up and have a look what's going on. I think we might have found it. It's obviously had a join put on the on-floor heating. It's got no pressure in at the minute, but that's clearly been leaking. So, good find that. We'll get the rest of this floor up and we'll see if we can get that fixed. So somebody's buried an isolation valve on the underfloor heating under the floor and that's what it's leaking. So I don't know what that, I can't tell if that's Oopinor or speed fit, but if it is Oopinor they've used the wrong valve anyway. So we'll get that cut out. We'll get that, it is Oopinor, that's not speed fit. Jacob's turning the valve I've got to fix the leak. <laughs> we'll get that cut out. Don't, this is where it's been leaking. I haven't got any pressure in the system, but that's not even the right fitting for that pipe because that's a speed fit fitting, I think, and that's an open oil pipe. So yeah, we'll cut, we'll cut into that because I've got to try and make a repair on this anyway. We'll just cut. That is definitely open oil, isn't it? Is it speed fit or open oil? It might be speed fit. No, it is an, it is an open oil type pipe. It's got a barrier. I might have a slight trouble fixing this. I've only got one crimp joint in the van. I'll go and have a look and go and have a route through my box. But I had a look this morning, I can only find one. That's completely the wrong thing to use on on floor heating. That was just literally just pushed on. It doesn't even fit the pipe properly and they've just wanged that on there. It's not, it wasn't grabbed and that's obviously been leaking a while. So we need to, I don't know what they're gonna do with the floor because all the floors wet through. So I'll have a look at what fittings I've got basically and we'll see if we can crimp. I'd sooner crimp it, if not, I'll have to use a compression. But it'll be better than that. At least it'll be the right thing for the job. These are the only 16 mil fittings I've got in the van, so I can use one crimp. I might just do two compressions. I'm not sure. I've got them, which will take me back to normal 15 mil compression. But we'll be able to do something with it. I've got a bit of pipe as well, so we'll have a look. That's my really old Rems crimping thing. I get this pipe reamed out. What I'm going to do is put one one crimp and one compression, because that's all I've got. That's going to be better than that. I'd as soon have crimped it all, but I just can't get the fittings today. I really need to get the heating back on. I could do it like that, and then go to compression and then copper, but I think I'll just do it like this. I think it'll be fine. You see how the pipe's got a little chamfer inside now, so these will just push on. We can mark that, crimp it, and hopefully I can get enough movement to 
to get this. It is a proper Upinor one with a proper Upinor grab ring. And then it's got a little, little bit that goes inside as well. And that taps on, unlike that, which is just a 16, uh, it's a 15 mil speed fit service valve on a 16 mil pipe. So it's a good job, that one. On these ones, you can see they're in because you've got obviously got the dot on the pipe. When you pull that out, it goes like that. So all I've got to do is press that with my jaws and then I'll just have to use a compression on it because there's nothing else I can do today. I'm actually going to use two compressions on it just because my press guns nearly just caught fire. So <laughs> it's, not, it's a long while since I used it actually, that one, because it's too heavy to carry around 110 volt, but it does get you out of the muck. So I'll just use two compressions on that and at least then we put an excess panel in so we can expand that joint if we need to but it should be fine these are the proper fittings unlike what they used before so this pipe will bend and forgive and it won't kink generally unless you go really mad on it so we can just get these tightened up we'll get everything pressure tested and inhibitor it and we should be good to go and then all i have to do is just temporarily make good the floor because all this lot's going to probably need to come out or be dried out what I'm going to do is top the pressure up on the heating steady on some ski uh, and then I'm going to connect my pump onto this underfloor heating manifold. The reason I do it like this, I need to obviously get all the air out of here because it's been leaking ages and I can dump this full of inhibitor then and then we can pump that in. So that's how I do it. I know you can connect it to a mains and then flush it out like that. I just do it with a transfer pump. It's the same, same difference but this way I can fill this full of inhibitor and it makes it a lot easier for me. So I'll make sure all these are open, we'll pump it all around and then we'll just do one circuit at a time just to get all the air out. These flow gauges and that need work. The whole thing's a bit of a mess. But we can only do what we can do and that's why we do it. But yeah, we'll, we'll do that, we'll get the system back up and working, make sure there's no other pressure drops and we should be good. Uh, I'm going to valve it off on these lever valves because they're less likely to leak than if I touch them, them ones on the manifold and then we can just work on this piece so I'll get these caps off, connect the hoses on and we'll get this one pumped back around get this pumped back around then so one circuit at a time, we'll get all the air out hopefully they're not going to let by they should be alright, we can cap them back off anyway there they should be it's empty anyway but they should be found so we'll get this pumped up. These are just washing machine hoses, but they're really handy for connecting onto the, the manifolds. So we'll put that one on the flow. That'll go out the top of our suction pump. And then the return goes back into the bucket, back into the tub, and it just gives it a good, good flow all the way around. It saves a little bit of water, and I can chuck all my inhibitor in there as well. We'll clean this tub out. And so Jacob's just putting the connections back together on the suction pump. This is, this is, I just used this for clean water. So last time I used it, I just used deionized water. So we'll get that primed through. We'll just fill the bucket, fill our container with the uh, out the fill loop water, mains water, and then that'll be fine. So dump a load of inhibitor in there first. Jacob's just connected all the pump in. We've got that connected up. So we'll fill this with water and then we'll just blast these circuits around. So we've got ourselves a bubble bath. This is full of inhibitor and water. We've, we've put too, probably too much inhibitor in this, but because it's been leaking for so long, it's probably all red inside. So we'll just dump that suction hose in there. And the outlet one goes back into the tub and then we just circulate that water around until we've got each one empty in there. So it's leaking. Uh, it might be beyond one of the hoses. So this is sucking the water out of the, of the tub and that's the return leg coming back in. So this will start popping in a, in a minute. All them, I think, are open. So we'll just wait for this to get the water back out of the return. And as I say, we'll do one leg individually. And that's the best way I find of doing them. I know you can do them with a hose pipe with water, but this way I just find you've got more control. You should see the air coming out of this now. I've just got these circuits opening up one at a time. Jacob's just gone inside to make sure it's not leaking. And what, when that one's clear, we know we're good. So I'm happy with that first one. It's got no air in it, so I'll open up the second one, making sure we don't get the heads muddled. 
So you should see that one from all aerated. So you see that coffin, that's all the air in the circuit that we don't want. So we'll just wait for that to clear. So the water looks a little bit manky inside. It's no surprise because it's obviously been, been topped up from the start. It looks pretty clear coming back, but inside the pipe that I cut out looked red, so I might I might flush these circuits out as well. You can see the red oxide inside the pipe, that's just oxygen breaking down all the pumps and everything like that. I think somebody's been out and put a new pump on, not, not from me, our company. So it's just a case of getting it all flushed out and making sure it's all working. Even says on it not for central eating. But there you go. That's what it was. So I've just opened these circuits all. Oh, they are all bled now, so it should start to work. That's getting hot. Uh, that one's not open. The stack might be satisfied. It's not that cold today. These aren't open, them three are. But we're getting there. We've got all the air and everything now. Right, the pressure is holding. What I'll do is I'll cap that fill loop back off and then hopefully we should be good. I've been round, pressurised everything up, um, got all the air out of everything, flushed everything through, inhibited it. So yeah, should be good. Just just quizzing Jacob on this. We're just uh, temporarily capping this pipe off because it feeds a hob. Eventually we need to move it because they're putting a new kitchen in. But obviously this is wrong anyway, isn't it? Because too close to the, too close to the cables and too close to the electric. So what we'll end up doing is bringing that across. And, so if you want to cap it up here, Jacob, for the time being, and then we can swing that across then, can't we, at the top to get away from them cables. This is just the job that's been dropped from me. So what is it? 150 in it from consumer unit to pipe. And that's closer so we'll end up having to swing it across and then bring it back down so i've just got jacob with me he's just doing his gas training but we always like to pick up little things what we can improve so jacob's just going to cap this pipe off and then we're just going to do a tightness test make sure we've got no leaks and then when we come back to put the new new pipe in we'll we'll swing it around and then bring it well away from that consumer unit and that'll be perfect then because the new the new hob is going over there anyway somewhere so watch Jacob do a bit of work. Bit of jet blue, and then we'll just tie that on. We're just doing a quick uh, let by tightness test. The meat is actually not very good to get to, but it's got warning labels and everything on. We could move all this stuff out of the way, but we can just about get on there. So we're just doing a tightness test. Obviously, when we come back to do the rest of the works, we'll we won't use compression. We'll use solder. Compression's fine just for the time being on that. And then we'll end up, as I've already said, swinging it across and out of the way of all them cables and stuff. But other than that, it looks okay. It's just feeding a boiler. So we'll pop back at some point when the kitchen's in. Just a leaky Worcester. I'm going to change the left hand side, right hand side uh, flow turbine and PRV on this one. And I've already pumped the expansion. So I'll get this one done. I think they're going to be leaking a while. They normally crack around there somewhere, but I'll change it all anyway. Change the left hand side because it's, it's a cheap part and it makes it easier anyway. So just get all that stripped out. Just have to take the pipes out, build it all onto the new one. And put it in the back. Right, that's that one all sorted. Um, I don't. I'm not, I'm not the quickest at doing them, to be honest with you. It's taken me two and a bit hours, but that did include the safety check I did. New left-hand side, new right-hand side, uh, PRV, uh, flow turbine adapter, and yeah, put it all back together. It was in a bit of an awkward place. I didn't really get a lot of footage, but I've done them before on the channel, just a bit. 
there, typical Worcesters in it. Analyse is nearly out of uh, calibration as well. I don't, I don't do a lot of servicing and repairs because I have got a, a, a guy who does all my servicing and repairs who works for me. So I just pick up the odd one or two. But that one was in a in an awkward place. She's been in that cupboard. They should have mounted it on the back wall rather than on that side wall. It only had like 250 mil in front. So a bit of a struggle. Back's hitting a bit now as well because it's been leaning over for the last couple of hours. And that's going to be about my day all wrapped up. So I've done them three. Um, I know the first one won't much. Just capping off that gas pipe. Done that leak. And then just done that right and left hand side on the horses. Yeah, as always, thank you for watching. Sorry I didn't get as much footage as I'd like to on some of the jobs. But yeah, you can only do your best. Um, I just needed to get a wiggle on. You can probably appreciate that. So yeah, thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.